Nuclear becoming a busy industry fueled by intense demand from the AI boom. We're seeing investments across big tech. Microsoft announcing a deal last month with Constellation Energy to reopen Three Mile Island and a reactor there. Amazon and Google also getting into the space a couple weeks ago, forming partnerships with X Energy and Kairos Power, respectively. And then there's Oaklo. It's a Sam Altman-backed nuclear company that's had a strong run over the last month. It's publicly traded. It's up over 150%. The company already has ties with the Department of Energy to try to prep a new plant in Idaho. And joining us now to talk more about the nuclear space is Oaklo CEO Jake DeWitt. Jake, thanks for being here. We've been trying to wrap our arms around all of this as we see this sort of nuclear resurgence here in the U.S. And we've been talking a lot about small modular reactors, right, which is this new innovation you guys are, are also working on. Um, can you just explain to viewers what is different about SMRs from traditional nuclear reactors? Is it mostly the size, or is there something else to really um, focus on here as well? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. There's there's a couple ways to, to kind of differentiate it. Um, size is one big factor, which comes with significant benefits. Uh, it allow, allows for a lot more scalability, a lot more capital efficiency, uh, which are big, big attributes, but also uh, what you're seeing happen and like what we're doing is bringing forward some of these next generation technologies that just have certain inherent upsides to them, uh, thanks to sort of the innate benefits they offer. And what that means is they look different than today's plants. They don't use high pressure water as a coolant. Um, instead, we use, you know, liquid metal that operates at atmospheric pressures. It's compatible with common alloys. It allows you to sort of have a clear path to scalability. It opens the door to do really cool things like nuclear waste recycling. Um, so all those things are, are what we view as sort of the next generation of nuclear technology coming forward. Some of which like ours are very mature technologies, right? We've, we've had this ex experience as a society building and operating a lot of these plants. And so it brings forward just a different combination of attributes from cost effectiveness, from scalability, um, as well as what they're delivering in terms of both the combined and heat and power product to open the door for a lot of different you know, use cases. Obviously, on data centers, there's a lot of excitement on the electric side. Right. There's also actually interest on the heat side because you can drive some cooling with the heat product, which is kind of weird, but one of the things you can do. Uh, Jake, I want to zero in on the recycled fuel that you guys want to use in your reactors. Um, how does that work? Because isn't you know nuclear waste isn't it spent? Isn't it used up? How do you still get get some juice out of it? Yeah, this is why I fell in love with nuclear as a kid. You know, when you split an atom, you get almost fifty million times more energy than when you combust like a molecule of natural gas or so. Uh, it's incredible. What that means then is uh, there's a lot of energy in nuclear fuel, and actually in almost all reactors, you only use about five percent of the fuel in one pass through the reactor. Um, and there's reasons why, long story short, is you know you could put more fuel in, it could run for longer, but that comes at increased cost for the added systems you need to manage all that. So it's kind of where the optimum lives. That means that more than 90% of the fuel remains unused coming out of the reactor. Uh, now, that said, it's not equally usable by all types of reactors, but by fast neutron reactors like what we're developing, um, and a few others are developing, uh, that's a technology that can actually use that material and keep reusing it until you use pretty much all the energy content that's available in that fuel. So you'll keep recycling it a bunch of times and get that get that remaining energy out. Um, just to put a number on it, what's cool about that is, and today in the US, there's something on the order of about 90,000 metric tons of used fuel around the country. That sounds like a big number, but it's pretty dense stuff. It would fit in something, the volume about the size of a super Walmart. But there's enough energy content remaining. In other words, there's enough unused fuel there to power the entire country using what we're doing for over 150 years. And every year, the current plants are producing enough waste to power the country for four more years. So a uh, pretty exciting opportunity to sort of deconstrain nuclear growth as we think on sort of the longer term outlook, but also reduce fuel costs with the added benefit of sort of changing the waste profile. We're talking about the, the technology, Jake. Also walk me through your, your business model. How does that um, kind of compare and contrast with rivals? And who, who are your customers, Jake? Yeah, so you know, we were one of the first to announce a partnership, kind of a major partnership with the data center um, provider. We actually have two that we've announced publicly. We've, we've got a 500 megawatt um, partnership agreement with Equinix that included some prepayment as well as a 100 megawatt partnership with, uh, with the data center development in Wyoming. Um, Obviously, you know, we have some exciting insights into the world of what's going on in AI, given who the chairman of our board has been since pretty much the beginning of the company, uh, Sam Altman. But that said, um, you know, one of the things that we set out to do in the beginning was, was make it easier to buy what people really want from nuclear systems. In other words, make it easier to buy nuclear power because the clean, reliable, affordable power, that's the stuff people really want. 
Uh, and so the typical business model has made that real clunky. It's really chunky in its transactional process, and it's difficult. And we're unique because we actually make that easy by we design, we own, we operate the plants, we contract someone to build them, and then we just sell the power uh, out to uh, to uh, to the customers through offtake agreements. That makes it easy for them to buy what they want. It's great for us because we get recurring cash flows. And right now we're the only ones doing that without having to have a middleman in the business. So well, it really well, works well for scaling. Yeah, sorry, Jake, to interrupt. Just to be clear, no. you don't do any of this right now, right? All of this no. is in the future. All of your competitors, what you're working on is all in the future. And so, you know, we've been trying to make it clear to investors, when you invest in this, it's a long-term thing. There's one analyst who likened it to biotechs, that it's sort of early stage. It may pay off big. But what are the risks here? I mean, there are regulatory risks. Are you, are you sure the science works? Are, you know, considering that you haven't been able to build one of these things yet, and neither of your competitors, so how do you know that, you know, what degree of confidence do you have that it's all going to actually work, on, especially on the timeline that you're working on? Yeah, well, design choices and technology choices matter a lot to that for managing that risk. Because yeah, certain design approaches uh, have a lot of new things that haven't been demonstrated and proven and are gonna take a lot of work to kind of prove those out. We on purpose are building off a technology set that cumulatively around the world was something that was prioritized as a research and development program around well, around the world in a couple different countries. Uh, and, and there's been almost 500 combined reactor years of experience garnered with these kinds of systems. And notably in the US, we built two very successful what I would call demonstrations of this technology. So liquid sodium cooled fast reactors, one in Washington state, one in Idaho. And the one in Idaho, we pretty directly build off of. That plant was a 20 megawatt electric, just under 20 megawatt electric power plant, ran for 30 years, demonstrated some amazing characteristics and operating capacity, like operating characteristics, demonstrated the ability to recycle fuel, all those kinds of things. So not only do we know the science works, we know how to, to build these things, we know how to operate these things. Um, and uh, and that's what we're intentionally building off of and building very close to in proximity. Because our view is, look, we know how to split atoms and control the heat and manage it. It's just about what are the sort of most favorable combinations of approaches that have technical maturity around them so you can go quickly to market. And that's the focus of ours is not trying to push the edge. You don't need to. It's been done before we know how this works. So then it's about kind of modernizing that design approach with modern supply chain characteristics, get stuff built more quickly. Uh, accordingly on that. So that kind of gives us an advantage on sort of the technical side. But to your question on risk, yeah, there's, you know, there's regulatory timeline risks. We were very excited to see a, a, the Advance Act passed um, through Congress and signed into law by President Biden that points to continued regulatory reform that builds on uh, legislative work that was passed in, under the Trump administration as well. So that's all been helping move the regulatory process along. Um, but you know, there's, there, that has implications on potential timeline risk and there's certain supply chain risk around fuel, but also there we're seeing the government put a lot of money to help on the fuel supply chain. But you're right, like we're not gonna be producing power until 2027. Um, nobody else is gonna be before that, everyone's gonna be kind of longer term. Um, so it takes some time, but you, a lot of these technologies are building on things that have been done to some degree before, and in our case, very much so. Uh, so that kind of takes some of those risk factors um, and, and puts them in a different direction, if that makes sense. Jake, it's great to have you on the show today. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.